Uh, Jonathan, you know, um, it, it, whatever we're discussing, whether it, we're talking about abortion, we're talking about a different medical issue, um, I, my most important point here is that we as GPs are family doctors. It is our job, it is our role, and actually, in many ways, it's the best part of our job to support every member of our community. Um, and so that means that particularly when a member of our community uh, is making a, a significant medical decision, whatever that decision, uh, whatever the background goes with that, including uh, the decision to, ha to, to have a termination, um, we would really, really like uh, for people to come and talk to us first. Um, we can perhaps give uh, some medical advice. Now, I, I have to caveat that by saying that we as GPs, are, we are not allowed uh, to encourage or we are not allowed to uh, offer uh, uh, termination. Um, so what, what I would say is that we uh, would like really to know what's going on perhaps with somebody where they've come to this point, whether they're considering an abortion or termination, whichever phrase you prefer to use, uh, perhaps uh, just before they come to that decision, uh, perhaps they could come and see their family doctor, not to discuss that, but to discuss maybe something in the background. Maybe they're making a decision uh, based on information that we could help them with. Making them ma maybe they're making a medical decision that we can help them with a medical condition. Maybe they're making the decision based on uh, a psychological problem that they're feeling very desperate, very low, they feel they have no options, perhaps they have a problem with housing for example. All of these things, that is the definition of a family doctor and perhaps before any medical decision for any reason is made, um, I would certainly say that please come and see your family doctor first and also bear in mind that any discussion that you have with your doctor is of course confidential. Um, and, so, and it's our job really to provide you that support in a safe and confidential manner. What do Gibraltar's politicians think? Well, the GSLP Liberal government told GBC it has already dealt with progressive issues like civil partnerships and equal marriage. It says its last manifesto did not make any commitment on the question of abortion as, it says, no representations on abortion were received from the countless groups and associations that it met before the general election and nothing came down the political party channels either. The GSLP Liberals say they would have to deal with the question of abortion in the same way that they dealt with civil partnerships and equal marriage, and using the same processes, first to consult, then to take a party view, include it in the GSLP Liberal manifesto, and then, if voted back in, consult as a government and legislate as a government. It says the Cabinet of Government Ministers at present has not considered changing this policy. Well, I think the starting point is that this is a complex issue where there are strongly held views in both directions, you know, legitimate, strongly held views. Our position in the party is that we see no clamour for uh, legislation on this issue. Uh, but indeed, if the, if the government were to contemplate legislation uh, on this issue, our view is that neither of the uh, political parties went to the last election or have any electoral mandate to legislate in this issue. And clearly, therefore, we think that legislation at this stage is entirely inappropriate. So if the government is contemplating legislation, uh, the MPs and the, the leadership team of the GSD consider that there should be uh, uh, a referendum on this issue so that there can be a full debate. So that's the GSD party position. What's Keith Asabardi's personal view? Well, look, I think it's a really difficult debate. And we said that as part of the party policy, in due course, if there was any proposal for legislation, there should be a free vote. My own personal view is that this is a really difficult question. And, you know, from the perspective of someone who, you know, in the past, uh, you know, when we were trying to have a baby, we've had miscarriages in the past and I think it's it's a really hard uh, issue for a lot of people and the whole debate as to whether a fetus is viable or not viable is a scientific construct that does not have any correlation to whether that being is living or not living so when people talk about the the right to choose of, of the woman and so on it doesn't necessarily factor in you know the debate of what is happening what is happening and who protects that living being in the, in, the, in the womb. So on balance, my view would be against the issue of uh, legislation 
on, on abortion liberally and only to cater for very specific circumstances where, for example, uh, someone has got uh, pregnant because there has been, say, a rape or something like that, which would be, of course, in a very extreme situation. But we need to be careful that we do not um, draft laws around hard cases because hard cases make bad law. Well, Jonathan, obviously um, I know and I, I'm aware that this is a very delicate issue. It's a very emotive issue and I believe that everybody's voices have to be heard no, no matter how sure one is of one's own opinions. But I believe in light of the fact that different world organizations like the UN Human Rights Committee, Human Rights Watch, the World Trade Organization have deemed this long ago as a human right, we have to take a pragmatic approach to the subject of abortion and empower our women to find to have the tools within the legislation in order to go through the process of having this choice available to them and coming out the other end as functional as possible meaning that if we if we legislate on abortion we can give women the tools of pre-counseling we can give women the options of, of, of what an abortion entails as much as what a pregnancy entails and um, allow them to to consider um, whether they they are able to bring a child into the world, whether they have the means, whether they have the capacity to raise a child in today's world. And if they don't hold their hand effectively through the process, not just on the medical front through abortion, but also on the psychological front, the fact of the matter is that women are still going to have abortions, and they are having abortions, and we know they're having abortions, but they're going across the border, they're having it done in clinics which will not offer them a post-abortion service, and of course they're going to come back with issues, and we don't know about the issues that they're having. So we have a duty of care to, to, to provide women with a service that they are, that they are taking anyway and see them through in the safest possible way that will help our society to, 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 to ensure that women are, 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 are taken care of in the best possible way. However, if I was in government and I legislated for abortion, um, I would make sure that that legislation went hand in hand with sexual health um, measures uh, with uh, contraceptive measures that I believe should be subsidized by the state. Uh, for example, the, the coil costs in the region of 200 pounds if you, uh, if you uh, provide a coil for free effectively for, for the woman. She's already um, uh, sterilized for a period of five years maximum. So you're already removing um, many uh, potential abortions, uh, vasectomies, men, many men are getting vasectomies in Gibraltar in the private sector, they should be able to get it for free. Tying of the tubes can be done rather simply with keyhole surgery and by having both ends of the spectrum, the choice of abortion with all the counselling that goes with it, with all these contraceptive measures, in many cases permanent measures, the idea would be to keep abortion as rare but obviously as safe as possible and that is where I think our community deserves to be. I think obviously what we need to do is analyse whether there is enough traction to have this debate and I think possibly there is and then we need to establish an agreed uh, baseline of facts on which to proceed to have an open and healthy debate which will allow uh, all sectors of the community to be represented and defend their arguments whatever they may be without being vilified. Uh, secondly. I think the headline of abortion also has uh, surrounding issues such as sexual health, uh, education, counselling, support, family planning and all that should be taken into context within uh, this debate as well as obviously uh, looking at the and, and contemplating situations such as uh, abuse and medical uh, advice which could contribute to this debate and analyse all these issues. Finally, I'd just like to say that uh, fundamentally I think the debate has to be a reasonable one, one carried out with respect and politicians, I believe, owe, uh, owe it to this community essentially to carry out, um, you know, to oversee this debate and not to bow to any perceived uh, perception of 
uh, movement towards changing anything without over, uh, a clear oversight of how everything has transpired. And I think obviously Brexit, which is quite recent and, and very much still a live issue, is a lesson to politicians on how to go around these type of issues.